So there I was watching Shrek, Shrek, uh, Shrek Paralysis Disney rankings when Bolt came along, much sooner than I thought it would. Huh? I remember really liking this movie when I was younger, so I rewatched it, and I still enjoyed it. So yeah, this video serves as both a counter argument to Shaft and a way for me to express why I think Bolt is a pretty good movie. Forgive me for answering a question with a question, but what? The first time Bolt was mentioned in a video, he said that the in-movie TV show going to such lengths to ensure Bolt thinks he really is a superhero was Same pretty that insane, sounds and not in a good way. Personally, I found it hilarious that the director did what he thought was necessary to make Bolt think he had superpowers, and how committed he was to keep it so. If the dog believes it, the audience believes it. Like dang, I don't think anyone has ever shown such a dedication to keeping a dog immersed in a fantasy, or any recent Disney blockbuster. I guess to each their own, but I found this really funny, and the director is unironically one of my favorite characters in this movie. Next, I feel like calling the film the generic, generic and forgettable, forgettable is a bit films. denigrate. I guess you can say that the plot where an animal is lost and wants to go back to their family slash home is very generic, like that hasn't been done before and after this film, but I found it very interesting how this film managed to tell the plot with the animal being a Hollywood superhero star and still have it be entertaining and somewhat make sense. What I'm trying to say is, I feel that this movie is unique in how they managed to tell this story, and that is why I feel that this film, while technically generic, isn't at all forgettable, and is in fact a very good example of how to spin your own version of a commonly told story. As for the characters, I'm only going to be talking about the one Shaft talked about, which means no dumb pigeons and no Mindy from the network. So that leaves... These three. Yeah, these two kinda suck, but Mittens! Mittens is my personal favorite character in the movie. She has a very strong and sad backstory as an abandoned house animal who wants to have nothing to do with the situation she is in, as well as often being the voice of character reason in the film. I will talk more about her character later, but as for the other two, yeah, I have to agree that Bolt is Buzz Lightyear, but boring, and Rhino is annoying. Finally, I feel that the climax isn't at all contrived and stupid. Remember that the show was put on hiatus as a result of Bolt's disappearance, and on top of that, the director was under immense pressure from the network to boost its ratings. Thus, it is believable that in a rush to finish filming, the proper preparations weren't taken, which led to the set being caught on fire. Dogs also have a keen sense of if their owner is in danger, so it isn't wild that Bolt knew Penny was in danger. As for the climax sequence itself, the Penny and Bolt reunion is a bit iffy, but for all Penny knows, she is hallucinating due to asphyxiation and smoke inhalation. Bolt tries to lead them to safety, but is unable to make it. However, with a final muster of strength, he does his super bark, which is a great callback. Penny's mother frantically looking for her is heartbreaking as well, and this shot of Penny and Bolt lying on the floor with the sunlight overwhelming the screen just gives me chills. I understand that it may not be the best climax, and in my opinion was a little too quick, but I still really like it, and I feel that Shaft was being unfair in this regard. Also I just want to point out Disney allowed a character to say, It's a good day to die. Now I'm concerned on a number of levels. Let's start with Bolt's rocky history as a film. It was originally going to be directed by Chris Sanders, who was known for directing amazing films such as Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon. The movie was going to be titled American Dog and was vastly different to what Bolt is now. However, due to the merger of Pixar and Disney, Sanders was removed from the position and after changing the name to Bolt, the animation team was told to finish the film in 18 months instead of the usual four years needed to complete a full film. Now I mention this because despite all of these setbacks, Bolt still has pretty good animation that holds up even by today's standards. As for the story itself, I've already talked about why I think it's decent, albeit it is very much a rehash of Buzz Lightyear's arc from Toy Story 1, but I don't think that it makes the film itself that much worse. In fact, I feel that there is more to the film than what meets the eye. 
I'm probably overthinking this, but this film is a really good example of illusory truth effect, or the tendency to believe false information to be correct after repeated exposure, basically consistent gaslighting. I feel that Bolt's character is much more believable than Buzz Lightyear's. Not better, but more believable. You see, Buzz Lightyear comes straight out of the box thinking he is a real space ranger, but besides the fact he is a new toy, there really is no reason for him to think so. Bolt, on the other hand, has had people go above and beyond to make him believe that he has superpowers, and we see the cognitive dissonance, or mental toll of having conflicting beliefs and actions on him as the film progresses. Another thing, and again, it is highly likely that I am overanalyzing this, but the film subtly touches on the treatment of child actors in the film industry. In the film, we have Penny, the child actress, and her dipshite agent. Throughout the film, we see this agent act unsympathetic, abrupt, and greedy. When Penny asks if she can take Bolt home, he flatly says no to her face. When Penny loses Bolt, he tries to give her a fake replacement dog, and claim it is the real one. When she nearly gets burnt alive. All he can think about is how to exploit the situation for fame. Now this movie is no Bojack Horseman, but it still shows how little child actors are cared for and how they are used for fame and profit. There are also multiple things I really liked in this film, one being Mitten's character arc, which I'll quickly summarize. In my opinion, her story is much better than Bold's, which probably isn't a good review for the movie, but whatever. As I've said, she has a really sad backstory as an abandoned declawed house cat, and the trauma from this has led her to distrusting all humans. When she initially meets Bold, she just wants to get away from him as fast as possible, but typical Disney hijinks pursue, and she gets captured by animal control. She thinks all is lost, but then Bold goes back to rescue her, to her great surprise. After they escape, she starts to open up to Bolt and teaches him how to act like a normal dog, but still holds her grudge on humans. This causes a rift between her and Bolt, who still wants to go back to Penny, and Bolt leaves Mittens. However, her views stick to Bolt's mind, and when he sees Penny with another dog, he realizes what Mittens said was correct. But the truth is, Penny really does love Bolt, and Mittens, who sees this, don't ask how she got there realizes there are humans who do care, and she lives happily ever after with Bolt and Penny, and I guess Rhino as well. Okay, this video is getting long, so here's a list of things I also liked. The beginning action sequences, every director scene, John Powell doing what he does best, Bolt attempting to subdue a random person, Bolt learning what blood is. Also, is this the only Disney film to have a dog canonically bleed? The trio escaping animal control. Mittens teaching Bolt how to be a normal dog. Mittens opening up to Bolt. The fire rescue. And Penny's mother punching the agent out of an ambulance. Woo, okay. I feel that I've made my point as to why I think Bolt is a pretty good movie. Not an underrated masterpiece, oh no no no. But a film that I feel is often overlooked or looked down upon. I don't know what position to put it in Shaft's video, because I haven't seen or have forgotten like half the films in it, but maybe I changed some of your minds or reminded you of what a film this is. And with that, I thank all of you for watching, and if you made it this far, why not give a comment and like and subscribe. See ya!